Hi everyone, uh, today on Umbra Oceania we're going to be talking about spell work. So while not all pagans are witches and not all witches are pagans, uh, today we're going to talk about spell work for those of us that are witches or are interested in pursuing witchcraft. So let me get my glasses on so I can look all learned and know what I'm talking about. Uh, I want to issue you guys a fair warning that during this video we will occasionally be talking about bodily fluids, self-harm, and harm done by others to the witch as pertinent to each section, um, which you'll see as we go along. If you're uncomfortable with any of these topics, please do not watch this video. Um, feel free to seek out other resources that will help you learn the art of witchcraft. Um, the resources section down below has uh, a great number of books that you can uh, read to learn about magic and witchcraft. Um, so, two, uh, continue on as an addendum. These are my opinions and experiences as a witch. Um, you may feel free to apply any of these thoughts or methods to your own practice, but do so at your own risk. Uh, <laughs> so with the legalese out of the way, let's get into it. A spell is a ritualistic act meant to achieve a certain goal. Uh, spells might involve words, uh, symbolic gestures, certain materials like herbs, stones, um, other physical objects, blood, candles, so forth. Uh, how these objects are used is dependent on the goal and on the individual witch, so we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, before you cast a spell, there are a few things that you should know. One, a spell is intended as a tool to aid an endeavor that you were undertaking. Um, so you can't just cast a spell and sit in your tuchus and then wait for something to happen. That's not the way it works. So you, let's say that you want a new job. Uh, you would have to follow up your spell with actions on the material plane, such as you know, sending up resumes, looking on LinkedIn and Craigslist, Monster, etc., etc., stuff like that. Um, so always follow up a spell with pragmatic actions that will help you to achieve that goal. You will find, generally speaking, if your spell work has been done well, that the spell helps you achieve something faster or in a greater fashion. Um, like, for example, it's to return to the job spell example, if you were looking for a job as a, um, I don't know, as a tutor, you might find that you get hired on by um, you know, a, a better company than the one you were looking at, at a higher rate of pay, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, be advised that while there may be no wrong way to do a spell, with exceptions, which we'll get to, um, you will only get out what you put into a spell. So, if you're doing kind of a fast and easy spell, um, you know, let's say let's say you have to pay your phone bill and you're a little bit light on cash. You might be able to do a you know quick money spell with like a basic candle burning. You might want to burn some incense as an offering, or you know leave out some milk and honey, that sort of thing. A lot of witches you know do offerings, um, regardless of whether or not they're utilizing different entities in their spell. It's just a thing some of us do. <laughs> um, but if you want to win the lottery, you would have to put in a lot more time and effort. And your offering would probably be more significant like you would probably have to cast a spell multiple times you might want to make a more significant offering like an entire loaf of bread um some of your hair some blood etc um or you know in something of that you know equivalent level of giving the effort and expenditure should be dependent on how large your goal is and how tremendous you want the outcome to be so bear that in mind. Lastly, before you do any magic at all, you should ask yourself these three questions. One, am I certain about what I want? Two, is what I want necessary or will it add to my happiness and well-being? Three, will I harm someone, including myself, by doing this spell? With exceptions, which we will also get to later. Be sure that your goal is clear, that you can visualize or otherwise perceive yourself achieving it, and that getting what you want will not disrupt your life. Um, for example, let's say that you want to do a love spell, you want to attract a partner into your life. Um, 
love is no bad thing. I would not discourage anybody from doing love magic if they feel prepared, you know, to, to give their love to someone else and to attract somebody that is worthy of them and good for them um, into their life. However, if you are not emotionally or mentally prepared to receive a partner, um, you have to be very honest with yourself about that. You have to be very honest with yourself about whether or not you are ready for what it is that you want. Um, let's say you do that love spell and you attract that awesome partner and then you lose the relationship because you were not prepared to give all that you needed to give and to receive all that you were meant to receive to have a healthy relationship with that person. That will disrupt your life. So be absolutely clear that you are ready to have what you're seeking when you do spell work. As a reminder, um, do not ever cast a spell on someone or for someone without their consent. Uh, to use magic on another person without their permission is a manipulation of their will. It should be avoided at all costs. If the person in question is incapacitated, um, ask whomever is in charge of their care if you may do magic on their behalf. Um, for example, some years ago, a good friend of mine um, was sick with a retroactive virus and I asked her, because I do a lot of healing magic, if I could cast a healing spell on her behalf. She consented and I performed the magic. So first and foremost, get permission. <laughs> Uh, so moving on, spell materials. There are tons of different materials that witches use for spells. Um, personally, I'm a hedge witch, so I use a lot of herbs and stones, and I also use blood in my magic. Uh, some witches prefer not to use blood, totally fine. They prefer not to use any bodily fluids at all, totally fine. Um, but these substances are potent, and they can add a power booster to your spell. So you can choose to use them, you can choose not to. It's all good. Um, a word of caution. However, that witches who have a history with cutting or other forms of self-mutilation may not want to utilize blood um, in their spell work um, as it can interfere with, you know, recovery and, um, you know, prevention of relapse into um, those habits. Um, those who menstruate may use their moon blood. It is a very powerful substance. Some of you might find this a little bit gross, but no, it's very, very potent, as is semen. Semen is also a very potent substance that you can use uh, to enhance your spell work. Um, you can also use spit, mucus, sweat, um, anything that comes from your body can act as a powerful enhancer. Uh, to spell work. You can even use your own fingernail clippings if you fancy that, or shed eyelashes, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are also spell fixtures. So, you know, there's individual castings of spells, and then there's something that you, for lack of a better description, enchant to achieve a specific purpose. Um, one of the most common spell enhancers are known as witch bottles. Spell enhancers. Spell fixtures. Uh, witch bottles. Uh, those are very common along with spell jars, herb wreaths, stangs, and so forth. Um, one of the spell fixtures I keep in my home is a protection jar filled with salt and other protective herbs and stones uh, to keep baleful influences out of my home and to keep uh, the household safe. It's worked so far. <laughs> um, So now we come to hexes, jinxes, and curses. Uh, to coin a phrase, with great power comes to great responsibility. And make no mistake, witches are creatures of power, no matter who they are, no matter where they're from, no matter, just no matter what period, witches are creatures of power. With any sort of spell work, it is important to take that power seriously, especially if you're going to do a hex. Some witches do not hex or curse at all. This is fine. However, uh, hexes, jinxes, and curses do have their place, in my humble opinion, under the following circumstances only. That a great wrong, i.e. abuse, exploitation, um, being deprived of a vital resource such as your home, your job, food, etc., um, or other such acts that are done with malicious intent, and there is no other method for you to have this wrong addressed. Or to be able to get recourse for it such as filing charges lawsuits and so forth so 
You have to have been wronged. There has to be no other method available. This should be your absolute last resort to having a wrong addressed. Don't hex people wantonly or without significant thought. Don't hex, jinx, or curse for petty reasons such as, oh, so-and-so stole my boyfriend, or so-and-so gave me a dirty look, or called me a name, or my boss is mean to me. Like, you know, it's acceptable to hex bullies if this is, you know, a pattern of abusive behavior. Um, so consider your options if that is what's happening to you. But if you are being bullied, abused, otherwise exploited or manipulated, and you've tried everything, Hexing and cursing, in my opinion, is acceptable. Um, one last thing to mention about hexes and curses. Be aware that, you know, many witches are, well, you know, it's the threefold rule, and whatever you send out in the world will come back to you. There's two things I want you to bear in mind. One, not all vengeance is petty, and it does have its place. And I fervently believe that karma works in very mysterious ways. And sometimes the way karma works is through witches. If someone has done a terrible wrong to you or to someone else, and they are not likely to receive any sort of punishment or, you know, bane for what they've done, hexing is acceptable. Secondly, be fully prepared to accept the consequences of your actions. Um, not necessarily that you'll, you'll get in trouble because you don't have to tell anybody that you've hexed someone, obviously, but be sure that you are prepared to accept the weight of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Be prepared for the outcome. Um, I've known some witches that have hexed others and then felt incredibly guilty um, upon seeing what their hex had wrought upon this other person, even if they really believed that they deserved it. So be absolutely certain that you are prepared to live with yourself after, because that's really, I think, what the punishment is, is having to live with yourself if you have a conscience afterwards. Um, if you do choose to hex, I would advise you not to hex death or disease on the person. Those things are really freaking terrible. Um, but rather to find a less serious means of addressing their wrongdoing or getting them to go away from you, such as with hot footing or banishment spells, you can do those too. Generally speaking, um, your spells should be used to achieve good aims in the world, you know, like good health for you or someone who's consented to have you do healing spells on their behalf, love, more money, a new career move, protection for yourself and another person. Um, I do actually a lot of healing and prosperity and protection magic. A magic is a power and a gift, so try to use it to better yourself and the world wherever you can. Uh, so thanks for watching this week's video. Um, please pledge to my Patreon if you can and stay tuned for more Orphic hymns. Uh, the Orphic Hymn to Hecate is up here on my channel, so feel free to have a listen. And the sheet music is up in my, my Patreon now as well in my Patrons Only feed. I'm working on the Orphic Hymn to Hades right now, so stay tuned for that. Um, and again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.